good. It's terrific. I was all thumbs. Wrong. You got three letters. Do you recognize any of this handwriting? I don't want to look at it. You just go ahead and read them, okay? Sure. Sure. Okay. It'll be here. All right. Dear Desperate. Desperate? Yeah. I, I know that sounds a little bit corny, but I didn't know how to sign the ad, so... Okay, Desperate. <laughs> Dear Desperate, from the sound of your ad, you want Scotty to come home real bad. Send me a picture of what you look like, and I'll be glad to be your Scotty, and I'll... we could have a real... You don't want to read this. Yeah, I guess that's why I uh, want to have a post office box number, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Keep your fingers crossed. Here's number two. Dear Desperate, my name isn't Scotty. But you can call me any name you want if you'll forward a hundred bucks so I can buy my way out of a lousy Mexican jail. Oh, boy. We are really batting 100%, huh? Well, we got another one. We got another one. This is... This is the one. Dear D, for desperate, if you want that divorce so bad, come up with more than a pretty please. I got bills piling up down here in Mexico. You know what it's like to live it up. There's this little senorita and a... It's not Scotty. He's not a big spender. Well, look, it's a beginning, right? I mean, you're getting responses, right? Right. Right. And you'll get it. We'll get it. We'll get it. I'm betting on it. Oh. I'm betting on me and you. We'll get it. We'll get that letter. Please. Oh. <laughs> you are, as they say, O'Reilly, a sight for sore eyes. It's been a long two years, Sonny. I don't suppose that you've overextended yourself very much since I last saw you? Hmm? I've had a few turns around the track here and there. Any uh, snippets of intrigue that you'd care to share with me? To an honest fellow like you? I guess I could mention a few things. I listen in breathless fascination. <laughs> what is this? Get, a, get away. This is a cheap trick or something. Get away. Just have it, Sonny. Sorry. You never know who's packing a tape recorder nowadays. You're never going to change, are you? Huh? Come on. Tell me. What have you been up to? Well, there's that little misunderstanding in Cairo and the caper in South America involving that uh, theft of emeralds from the government mine. And the assassination attempt in Calcutta. Oh, 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 and... b b back up a little bit. Yeah. Who got misunderstood in Cairo? When that Russian spy was found dead at the base of the Great Pyramid, it was in all the papers. None of the papers I read. <laughs> well, anyway, as it turned out, the Russian spy was trying to sell government documents. <laughs> but they were fakes. And you blew the whistle on him, right? Me? I was on a tour of the pyramids. Like I said, it was only a misunderstanding. At the last count, you'd seen the pyramids about 300 times. You probably helped build them for all I know. Well, let me tell you, kid. That Russian did have some good secret documents to sell. What about the South American cable? Ah, now that was a nasty situation. Nasty? Mm. Ten pounds of emeralds stuffed into 17 feet of the meanest boa constrictor you'd ever want to meet. They tried to smuggle emeralds in a snake? <laughs> I tell you, Sonny, the ingenuity was beautiful. And what happened? Well, the snake hit the big time. He's a star of the city zoo. I almost don't want to ask what happened to the emeralds. <laughs> well, sorry, I can't give you any details on that. Just between you and the snake, huh? Eh, uh, you know this touchy business, kid. Somebody tells somebody, then a rumor starts. First thing you know, there's a war. Mm. I almost expected to see you uh, crop up in that Iranian hostage mess, too. Uh, what makes you think it didn't? <laughs> <laughs> I should have known. Well, a woman could go stir-happy just puttering around the house. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Sure, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, hi. Good to hear from you. Yes, listen, I think I've got some information that uh, you could be interested in. Meeting? Your boat? Sounds fine. Uh-huh. Yeah. That was Anthony Cassidyne, the man that I'm supposed to be in partnership with. I hope you've done your homework on Cassidyne. Enough to know he's never gotten into anything this heavy before. Why the switch? Oh, I don't know. Well, 
I think I do. <laughs> anyway, look, I, I, I'll fill in on the detail later on. I, I have a hunch I'm into something a whole lot bigger than I originally thought. But what I need from you, O'Reilly, yes. is the thing that you are best at doing, and that is sticking a, like a glue to a subject of my choosing. The subject being? One Luke Spencer. And don't be fooled by this dude. He's a whole lot more complex than he looks. Stick with him. When I point Luke out to you at this uh, up-and-coming auction we've got sooner or later, right. don't lose sight of him from the moment the auction starts gotcha. until it finishes now. Can you do that little thing for me, O'Reilly, please, huh? Try me. Ah, oh, darling. <laughs> ah! Here you are. What a nice way to start the day. How sweet, Monica. Thank you. Makes me wonder why. Well, Alex, I kind of thought maybe we could... Uh... Resolve a few of the differences that we've had lately. I heard uh, you and Alan arguing early. Practically at the crack of dawn, it must have been quite a disagreement. Well, hardly anything earth-shattering. I have made some rather heavy investments in some diamond mines in South Africa. <laughs> well, everybody knows that. I mean, everyone knows the Quartermain family has been in the diamonds for years. Well, precisely. Monica, I will never understand your husband. Never. Oh, I realize he can be rather difficult when he digs his heels in. But to tell you the truth, Alex, I don't know. I'm kind of concerned about our financial situation. Well, I'll assure you, Monica, that it's all quite healthy. That's good. You see, Alan just feels that ELQ International is divesting itself of, well, too many holdings, kind of putting all of its eggs in one basket, as it were. And how do you feel about it, Monica? I don't know that I'm really qualified to pass judgment on the methods of operation. All I know is it's what is making Alan very unhappy. We are being quite, uh, quite candid with each other, aren't we, Monica? I certainly hope so. Well, I feel that Alan's temper is due largely to the fact of the, uh, situation with your marriage. Situation? <laughs> you two are hardly lovebirds now, are you? <laughs> Alex... My marriage is hardly relevant to uh, what we're talking about. What we're talking about, Alex, is money. I have some croissants heating, with raspberry jam, sweet butter, and hot coffee. It'll be ready in a second. I see. You aren't expecting me then, huh? Of course not. Whatever gave you that idea? You're such a joy to me, do you know that? Do you make me feel that I am? Okay, so tell me, how did you manage to sneak away so early this morning? I did not sneak away, I walked out of the front door, and I'm going to continue to walk out of the front door, and I'm not giving any excuses to anybody anymore. Oh, even Monica? Especially Monica. You are a dynamo in the morning. I have come to terms with myself, about us, and about what we want out of life. The day that Monica slept with Rick, she cut whatever bond we had left between us. I owe her nothing. I don't have any shame, I don't have any regrets, and I don't have any guilt with you. The only thing that I need and that I want desperately is a chance just to love you and look after that child that you're carrying for the both of us. I hope so. I need you so much. I, um also now have the most incredible cover story for us. <laughs> you seem to have an inexhaustible supply. Yes, of but stories. this one is legitimate and fantastic, and all thanks due to my adorable sweet cousin, Alex. Alex? What does she have to do with us? I am investigating the family's financial affairs that she and my father manage. That's going to keep me very busy and keep me out of the house for long periods of time. May even take me to Europe and to New York. You mean we could be together? Whenever you can meet me, we'll be together. Europe? Alan, that's another idea. I mean, maybe I could even stay there after the baby's born. I uh, rented an apartment for you in New York. I took it just for that purpose. I took it under the name of Mrs. Arnold Wellington. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. I did. 
You made the name of it. What are you laughing? <laughs> I took it because you can't have the baby here in Port Charles. As much as I want you to and as much as you want to. It's not safe anymore, my love. Alex is threatening your safety every second. Well, I would be able to see you, wouldn't I? To be with you? I'll be with you every moment I can. And those that I can't, I'm going to steal every second. And it's all going to be under the guise of investigating financial affairs. You're a very devious man. I know. Aren't I terrible? Trouble with us Quartermains, we're all the same. We take what we want, when we want, and from whom we want. God knows I want you. I love you so much. You didn't say much about my breakfast. Your breakfast was magnificent. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sorry about the eggs. They were a little bit more scrambled than they were easy over, but it's just because I, I broke the yolks. You know, I it's... know, but it's okay. You're learning. <laughs> Listen, I would eat... It doesn't matter. You win some, you, you lose some, but I would eat any, any egg you, you, you made, no matter how you did it. I don't care. However, on the other hand, uh, it's pretty obvious who's going to have to do the cooking when we get married. When we what? That was a slip of the tongue. No, it wasn't. You said it. You no, said when we get no, married. No, 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 I didn't mean that. Yes, you did mean no. it. You said it, Luke. You said when we get married. Come on, Laura. Well, come on, Laura. No, there's no congratulations in order. <laughs> yes, there is. You finally I don't want to talk about it. No, I don't want to talk about it. I don't care if you want to talk about it. You just did Laura, it. this is not the time. Then it's why'd you bring it up, huh? I didn't bring you it up. Yes, you did. I didn't bring it up. We're going to get married. I... I, there's somebody at my door. Okay, answer it. But I didn't... You have to give oh, me a break now. Me. I mean, I didn't say that today. Maybe I won't say it tomorrow. Maybe I'll say it sooner or later. I... Look. Good morning. Hi. Well, I hope I'm not interrupting. No, nothing at all. Uh, please, come in. What, what, what's wrong? Well, it's your friend Hutch. I'm afraid he's in worse trouble than I thought. How are you, Captain Ramsey? Oh, I'm all right. I'm glad both of you are here, since I know that you're Hutch's closest friends. Yeah, that's right. We are. May I get you a cup of coffee? No, no, thanks. I'm strictly on a milk diet nowadays. Captain, what is this about Hutch? Yes, we've been really worried about him. Well, that's why I dropped by. I, um, I did say hello to him as you asked me to. Thanks. Listen, how's he handling it there in the joint? Well, I guess you'd say he's... Handling it pretty well. At least he's uh, putting on a good act. But you said that he was even in worse trouble. Yeah, what could be worse than getting uh, dead birds in a box? Being a dead bird could be worse. You know, hearing about something like that is bad enough, but uh, when you get a demonstration of just how deadly the prison grapevine can be, that's rough. Yeah, I understand that the word moves pretty fast inside the joint. Fast? Do you know, before I went up to visit Hutch, before I got there, just about everybody in that prison knew that I was coming up to speak to him about giving more information to the anti-crime group? How could that be possible? They're all locked up. Yes, but that's one of the marvels of the prison system, Laura. Nothing works faster or more efficiently getting messages across than that grapevine. Have there been any, any moves on him since that thing about the dead bird? Yes, one. Kind of indirectly, and I must say, and I tell you, it was more chilling to me than if they had really made an attempt on his life. What? What happened? Well, when I was visiting Hutch, I reached into my pocket to get one of Joe Kelly's new cards. You know, he's a lawyer now, and I thought maybe Hutch would like to have a lawyer on the outside working for him. Yeah, that's a great idea. Maybe Joe will be able to help him somehow. Not with this, he can't. When I reached into my pocket, not only was the card there, but this clipping from a prison newspaper that hadn't even been printed yet. Somehow, somebody had slipped it into my pocket, and I didn't even know it. Jefferson Smith Hutchins died of unknown causes in isolation in Block C-8. Yes, sir. What is it? What kind of a sick joke is this? Oh, that is horrible. It may be a sick joke, but somebody means it. And if Hutch doesn't watch his step 24 hours a day,